Can we put it on your, can we put it on something? What would she, like, what would your request be? It's just like Tim's. Let's put it that way. It was just really? like Tim's. And let's just do it on this mug, whatever it was. And, and it was just like, I was all right then. She was nice. Because <coughs> he was a very sweet, loving person. But certain days, he just couldn't get near her. Right. And, like, you know, I'd look at my mother. I was walking by, look at my mother. But every day, she'd come over, like, four minutes in the room. She's like, just stay clear of her. I said, wow, I came over to see her today. You know, like, what the? Right. Anyways, one of those things, one of those days, she went on the man thing. I said, same thing happened to Tim. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Tim. Must have gotten a little busy. There's days I wish I had a man. Like I was going to say, today's one of them for me. Yeah, for you, yeah, for me. But, but I don't, so I deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I kind of, I'll admit myself to you. But yeah, I don't. I won't. I, I won't put. I won't put it on someone else. If I no, know. I agree. People like people like that. Yeah, and and to her benefit, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. She probably can't help herself. No, that's why I just go. I'm done. You know when I get annoyed when they continue to keep going even after I say I'm yeah, done. When she throws shit. Yeah. When she continues, I will tell you this: in those cases, if something were to happen to come anywhere near my way, I'm gonna go right the fuck out. If they want, if something like that came my way, like something she threw, oh yeah, I would throw it right. No, back. I don't blame I you. Would, and I don't listen to her. No, I don't I blame you. And you know what? You're fine to do that. I would do it too. Which isn't really right, but that's my temper. But you know what? You have to expect that when you're, you can't be that fat.
and you had Joe in. Oh, that's good. Plug it in. Yeah, it would help if that was plugged in and it popped out. All right. We had an unpluggage. Now we have plugage. And we should have a plugage today because mm-hmm. we, we are scheduled to have our good friend Ryan Brutt call. Mm-hmm. Ryan is a contributing editor of Hot Rod Magazine. And he wants to know why you're pacing all the time. <laughs> he's nervous, Cliff. He's nervous. He doesn't know what to do. This is the first. He's never done radio before. He's nervous. <laughs> it's my third day on the job. Yeah. You can watch me pace on VaughnLive.tv slash Motormouth Radio. Hopefully we'll have some audio. <laughs> yeah, we'll I don't have those nerves. Back then. <laughs> Five one six five seven two seven four. I'm just kind of lay here, take a siesta. <laughs> seven four. Hey, I like this microphone position. This may be a good way to do this. It's kind of hard to see the phone now. But yeah, I can't really roll over because I'll no. crash into the chair. <laughs> Ray this is quite comfortable. Ray is laying down on the shop bench. Hold on. One I need second. a pillow. Hold on. <laughs> I need a pillow. I you actually do, need neck support. You do need a pillow. Hold on. We're going to take oh, this. Oh, well, here's Cliff. Let's we're going to take this picture. All right. You take a picture. <laughs> Let's see what's up with Cliffry here. Uh, okay. It's all working now. Cliff got it going. Good. I'm glad Cliff's got it going. And, and Ray's got it going here on the shop. <laughs> all right. I'm back. Good. That was fun. If you missed it, Ray was actually laying down on the shop bench. Like I've never done that before. No. Huh? I usually lay under it. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the audio, and Ray's taking a snooze. Five one six five seven two like seven four four zero. Seven four four zero. That's the number. You have a chance to jump in on us uh, before we talk to Ryan Brutt, who a columnist, hot rod columnist, and and uh, what would you say, self-proclaimed automotive archaeologist. Yeah, he writes the column where he goes and finds, kind of what Tom Cotter does, he goes and finds cars in garages, barns, yards, mm-hmm. things that are just, you know, uh, languishing out in, the, in nature. And he writes about it, puts them in the, in the, in the uh, magazine. But a lot of the, we'll talk to him about it, a lot of what he does is now not just putting in pictures of the cars, but he talks to the owners and then, you know, schmoozes his way sometimes into these garages, which yeah. is... The harder part of the job, I think. So we should be talking to Ryan in a little while. Mm, Very cool. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to the fun. Let's say hi, you're on with the motor mouth. Hey, fellas. What's going on? Hey, Hey, what's what's up, Cliff? Cliff? Pretty cool. I finally got this one thing figured out, and it looks good. Hey, thank you for the... uh, It's like being right there in the studio. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I was looking at your guests coming up, and pretty cool stuff that uh, I I was... One of the first things that popped up is this uh, Daytona that he... uh, Oh, yeah. That he found that he carries a sounds like he keeps revisiting it every year and uh i'm just curious to hear all about that car because i mean it looks like a uh i mean it car looks like it has some substantial value to it uh, interesting that it looks like it's in the middle of a junk pile yeah and you know i wonder what the people the people that own it well, i'm sure there's some story behind their plans with it cliff um, where did you see that was it on youtube no it's on I, Ryan's I, don't know, I think i clicked on your on 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 your on ray's uh email today he had like a link to this guy's uh, oh, blog. Okay. It's on his blog. Uh, I, I can switch, and it was pretty cool. It's it's an orange Daytona. It looks really, really uh, all there. Yeah, you I know? Didn't, you know, I used to do that that email blast. I ju- I just sent it out to Cliff and Glenn because they're the Mopar fanatics in the crowd, and I knew that. And Glenn needs needs a cookie and a hot cup of tea these days because he's still on a, another rant that's really taking up a lot of everybody's time here. So <laughs> Cliff's laughing. He he star- you started a cliff. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I thought he'd, he'd get a kick out of seeing that because uh, that car did. It is. He, he, Ryan has revisited it a few times. Well, yeah, my, but that, that Daytona looks really like an interesting car. It looks like something uh, your buddy Mark War- Warman would love to have. You got to just poke the bear, don't you? You really got to just poke the beehive. <laughs> were you like that in school? Were you the kid that was always just pissing off the teacher? I got a feeling you were. I mean, you're well, not bothering that, me. Like Niagara Falls, right? That Niagara right. Falls routine. Well, I had a hat company. Famously. Yes. No. Slowly, step by step. Yeah. You know? and, and just for the record, yeah, you're, you're, ma- not bother, ma- you're not bothering me. It's uh, I, I find it all quite uh, quite. Glenn humorous. doesn't really dig no. that guy, but I think he's cool. I think any, I yeah. think anything on a, I think anything on a, on a about Mopars on TV is great. Right, so. I think so too. I think no, yeah, well, no matter how you get it. <laughs> yeah. the, the, I, I follow Glenn, and, and we're, we're kind of having a private conversation on the air here, so it's kind of not, you know, no one else knows what we're talking about. But yeah, neither do I. I have no clue. Glenn, the, the car hunter, got on a, a Mark Warman rant this week that he shared with everybody, and, and very in depth. He had great points, and he made the, the point that the reality TV should be gone. It should be just a like a like a like an overhaul in type of a show. 
it's got merit. His point, his, his and some point good has questions. Merit. He has this one question. I guess he'd like to ask him about this uh, creative industries. You know, I, I Mark has spoken a few times. I think about the Super Birds being built there, and I, I guess uh, Glenn looked up some stuff saying that it looks like just the Daytonas were done there. Super Birds done somewhere else. So uh, it's a good, uh, you know, it's a good question for him next time he's on. Yeah. You know? and, and the but, thing uh, too is that you know, like with anything that old. Is the uh, is the data there? Did, did people actually document this stuff? Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. True, so. you know, a lot of stuff is uh, who who said what and who was the first one to say it. And you know better the than expert on it. you know you know better than most with your investigative background. You can only find something that's there. Right? Exactly. Yeah, if it's you not know. There, so, uh, yeah. but um, yeah, but I'm glad if you can ask you ask him when he calls in about the Daytona and what the people's plans. I mean, I'm sure that yeah. every big Mopar collector or big money Mopar collector in the world is trying to get their hands on that car. You know, oh, and he did say on the blog that the car, that people ask him the car Chris is outside of a garage. Is a garage, up, and he said people ask me all the time why isn't it in the garage? And he asked the owners, and they said, well, the garage has a very a bad support beam, and they were afraid it would collapse. So, oh, so they'd much rather. Uh, well, they put the car outside to save it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it, it's gonna be, deteriorate faster, probably. Yeah, but, but it's it kind of cool. It won't yeah. be crushed, right? Yeah. But so, I'm just so curious, what makes somebody take a car like that and just park it one day? You know, yeah. that, that's always fascinates me. Oh, you I know, can tell you why. What's Cliff? the last time the key shut off on that car? Yeah. You know? Oh, I could definitely tell you why, because it gives these people celebrity status. <laughs> no, no, I think it's <laughs> really time that's for the first thing really in their minds. I think it's the first thing from I their minds. I think it is. I think because if that car disappeared from their from their field, nobody would come by and talk well, to them. That's today, but like Cliff said, when they parked it, that oh. wasn't their, their thought at all. No, that wasn't. And having was parked a car myself for over 20 years, I can tell you that is not the thought of, of – you're not thinking about the rebirth at that point. You're just no. thinking of, like, at this time, you have to do this. Well, it's always, well at, least, at least your GTO, you were kind of working on for a while, but what, what's, what's the excuse for your, uh, your Nomad? Well, no, no. They were both in the same boat. <laughs> they were both in different garages not being worked on. Now Cliff is poking the bear, right? Well, that's okay. <laughs> no, I can answer that. The Pontiac didn't start getting worked on until just four years ago. Until then, it was just sitting in a storage garage. Mm-hmm. And were you gonna? Did I hear like a couple of shows back that you might not go gasser on the Nomad? That you might go in a different direction with no, no, it? Or the thought now is to go that. that. Originally, that was the plan for the car. Then I changed my mind. Bought a, I bought a nine C one cop car to do a resto mod body swap with. Now hanging out with these lunatics I'm hanging out with that are all gasser guys. Mm-hmm. I'm going. I'm back to the gas. Of course, when the one guy says, "I'll give you," I got a straight axle for you, so we'll you know we'll bring it up. It I saw helped. your friend Steve had both his cars at the uh, the Sears show about a week or two ago. And it's his, his cars are beautiful, and he's building uh, a third one. Mm-hmm. It, it, it just the, the gas, the whole gasser thing is so cool. You know, he was at an event last week with Vic in Belmore, and it was they had a line of 55 Chevy gases. So the, these guys are all. They, they all, they all wow. come out. So, Cliff, just between us, here's what we're going to do. You're going to get in your wheelchair. I'm going to get in my wheelchair. And we're going <laughs> to roll over to Ray's wheelchair when this car is finally done 30 years from now. Well, that's what you said about the Pontiac. <laughs> we're so. all going to be old. We're going to be doing, Ray and I are going to be doing the show and swapping out dentures. Like, hey! Somebody else is going to have to drive it to the shows for him, right? Right, right, right. His Thank grandkids God. are going to be driving it to the show. <laughs> that would be cool. That'd oh, be yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you go by Chris's timeline, you'll know that that's totally <laughs> off the wall. Well, anyway. I can't wait to see that Nomad on the road someday. Yeah, we'll someday. <laughs> someday. You, Ray wants to when guess. Was, when was the last time the Nomad actually was driving under its own power? 1984, <laughs> 5, maybe 1985. Wow. That's the wow. sticker on the window, the last Amazing. sticker on the window, yeah. And you just shut it off and that was it? Well, no, my, my it? brother was driving the car at the time, and what happened is he had bought another Nomad out in Colorado that we went and picked up. He had showed me the, a white one, right? Yes. I they were a big, yeah. yes. So he, he was driving. The, what happened is he had a good engine in the, in the black car. The white car has, it had a 265 in it that was burning a lot of oil. So as soon as we got home, we swapped engines. <laughs> and then he kept driving the white one, which is also still in my purview of... Of realm, I still that car is still within my grasp. Uh, that's another one that's out there. But you know, he drove that, and then uh, now they they both started sitting, and I inherited the black one mm-hmm. after you know after he passed the so. ashtray, which yeah. I like to call it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, actually, it does. I just took a, a rear end out of it to give to Billy Wondolowski last week. I stored it. I said, where did I where did I put that ham set? Oh. It's a Mopar eight and three quarter ham. Of course, and it's in your shed, which like, is the nomad. right. It's in the nomad. Let me take that out of there. Right, it's the shed, the ashtray. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> mobile storage. Yeah, mobile. How about stable storage? Next next to the Riviera rear window and the uh, What's under the pool the Challenger deck? doors or something? Those are in the know. shed, yes. I do have those on Earth now, so i got to get rid of them. See, Cliff, Ray wants to either gas it or resto mod it. I want to eBay it. I'm telling you, he can eBay that every party has. Mm-hmm. It could be like that show, The Hoarders, that where they, they yeah. sell all you. Did you see that new show, the, like something about Hoarders, where they sell off uh, all the parts, wait a minute, and then they build you one car, like that uh, that one rod uh, builder in California? Is it rusted? No, rust in destruction, destruct, rust Something no. like that. Rust we could do something. that with Ray. We could sell everything he has no. and, and, and have like a 100-point show no, car no, built. No, the problem is those guys have like... 30, 40 cars, I, I just have a small, small Cliff, handful. that car should be a dreamer for someone else. I figure a, a, a couple of grand, let it go. Yeah, but my point is, why can't it be a dreamer for me? Why <laughs> take my dreams away? <laughs> All you do is squash my damn dreams. <laughs> I want a dream too, damn it. <laughs> this guy doesn't no, take me... it away. He's got to always take my lollipop away. like a away. nightmare than a dream. Hey, some of us dream in color. Some of us dream with ghouls. Some, yeah, we all dream different. <laughs> well, let me let you go, and I'm going to let you, you. I know you're probably waiting for your caller to call in. Yeah, thanks um, for just roiling that up, Cliff. That was really good this yeah, morning. For, My blood pressure um, never felt so good. Thanks for poking the bear, Cliff. <laughs> all right. Ask a lot of questions about that Daytona, please. I will. <laughs> all right. All Take care, Cliff. Bye-bye. <laughs> I had medication here, and where did it go? Did I take it already? I don't know. I hope I did. Otherwise, you're in trouble. Don't you hate when that happens? Yeah, I, I was a little, uh, someone, maybe watch the one to tell me if you saw me take a couple of pills or something. Yeah. Hopefully, when we come back, we'll be talking to Ryan Brett, the uh, self-proclaimed automotive archaeologist and columnist for Hot Rod Magazine. But first, the Motor Mouth Radio on a group of the hour, drivers with mismatched tires on their car. That's right. That's me. You got slicks on one side and you got snow tires on the other. Well, that's that's your problem. If you got tires mismatched on your car, you're part of the Motor Mouth Radio on a group of the hour. Keep it where you got it. Got a lot more of this stuff plus Ryan Brutt coming your way. Hold on. We'll be back with answers to your car questions. Give us a call at 516-572-7440. Oh, I should have said the Motor Mouth thing. WHBC 90.3, the radio voice of Nassau Community College, is looking for individuals, businesses, charities, or organizations in our local global community that would like to donate to support our radio station. Whether you listen locally or online, here's how it works. Go to our webpage at ncc.edu slash whbc and click Donate Now. Or if you prefer, you can send a check to WHBC Radio, One Education Drive, Garden City, New York, 11530. Make your check payable to the NCC Foundation. In the memo of your check, write WHBC, donate now. Any contribution will help defray our operating costs and it's tax deductible. This message was brought to you by the radio voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. Streaming online at ncc.edu slash WHBC. Have a question about your car or someone else's car? Then give the Motor Mouths a call, 516-572-7440. We're back. We're bad. It's Motor Mouth Radio, your one-stop shopping for anything automotive that involves your ear. It's Motor Mouth Radio. That's Ray Guarino behind the shop bench. He was just taking a nap. Like (laughs) ocular disturbances. I'm Chris Switzer. I'm Chris Switzer. We're going to go to the phones. We're going to go to the phone. We're going to say hi, you're on with the Motor Mouths. Hey, Motormouth guys. I was there a few weeks ago. Uh, it's Jonathan from Legendary Motion. How are you guys? Hey, hey Jonathan. Jonathan. How are you? How are you doing? Good. I actually was just listening to your radio station, and I have to, have to admit something. I have mismatched tires on my car. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, now, all right. I do, too, on one of my cars, but I have a good reason for it. What is your reason? Um, well, the car has actually been sitting for a while, and instead of putting a, my good set of wheels and tires on it, I've been every time I do get back on the road, I drive on my spare set. Are they the Italian tires, the Boulderinos? No, they're uh, they're just like basic Falcons, and uh, one one's a one's a, um, a Nanking, one's a Falcon, and then mm-hmm. yeah. uh, two other Japanese companies. All right, so you have mismatched brands. Mm. 
Yeah, mismatched brand. Oh, you're talking about like... Oh, it's, it's, no, no, it's, it's you know, mismatched. Believe me, there's no science to this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm actually running two different tire sizes on a car, but there's there's a reason for that. So, yeah, okay, good. You, you yeah. fit the... Uh, you're still part of the, the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour and receive accolades from your peers. And, you know, after we met Jonathan a couple of weeks ago, I found out, unbeknownst to me, I get an email from another friend of mine saying, hey, you know, you should have this friend of mine on your show. <laughs> the, and I'm like, wait a minute, is that... And I had your car. I, I took a picture of it. This is our friend Steve, Monte Carlo Steve. No, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the guy. <laughs> of course it is. I was standing right next to him when you were talking to him. He, uh, uh, he's actually a really good buddy of mine. He uh, he does a lot of jet ski work, uh, and he's the jet ski guy, and I'm the uh, the car guy, and we, we always uh, hang out and talk and have stuff machined and make custom parts. Uh, we're definitely gearheads, that's for sure. So I guess you can't solve the, end, the problem with that Kawasaki engine either, huh? I'm sorry? You can't solve his Kawasaki problem either, I guess. No, why no, is no. oil's getting into the water? Yeah, that's a whole other thread. We can't get into that now. It's a, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. Steve is yeah. one of those guys. I always called him the crazy scientist. Steve actually went to school with my older daughter. They went through together. That's how I met Steve. Uh, actually, there was a, one of the first times I physically met Steve. There was nighttime, a window, and a shotgun involved. And oh going, man! I can tell you more of the story maybe later, but yeah. <laughs> See, he never told me that. That's. Yeah. That's actually uh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it is. It was. Yeah. I mean, I, I learned to, I learned right away with Steve. You have to get a firm grasp on him, and 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 that corner him, and then you can proceed from there. We've become very good friends since then. So, you've yeah. you've since put the shotgun down. Yes, I have. Well, good. well, me, him, whoever had it, we don't know. It's just all rumor right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so when are we gonna get John, Jonathan? Whenever you guys are, are free, I'm. You know, my schedule. Uh, it's the the slow season, so my schedule is kind of free. Oh, good. All righty. You know, I'd love to come in and, you know, just hang out and talk about cars. Okay. It sounds like a great time. I will, uh, we've been doing it for 13 years, and it hasn't uh, failed us yet. You know what you should do, Jonathan? Shoot us an email at uh, motormouthradio at ncc.edu. That not only keeps it fresh in my mind, but it'll remind me to, you know, look at the book and get back to you, and then we'll uh, we'll schedule you in for the in the upcoming month. That's uh, Motormouth Radio at ncc.edu. Correct. Okay. And then we'll, right, uh, so we'll work on it from there. We'll make it happen. Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for the Take call. Take care, guys. Okay. No problem. Soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 516-572-7440. Waiting on a call from Ryan Brett, the uh, columnist for Hot Rod Magazine and automotive archaeologist. Since I'm already recording stats, I'll give you our stats for September, by the way. Yes. You we can, you can also repeat the question, too. Yeah. We had 28 callers in September, which is good. Mm-hmm. One new caller and 12 guests. Wow. Sunday pushed us up over the that limit because I counted. You know, we did a bunch of people. Yeah, the question was 100 people were asked if they ever did this or if they ever do this in an empty parking garage, mm-hmm. and 40% said yes. Does it involve a car or no? Well, does it involve a vehicle or no? It does. It and does. you're in a parking garage. So, again, like I said, I'm trying to keep the questions that I call somewhat automotively uh, you know, based. Can I throw an answer out? Sure. sure Squeal right. the tires. Burn out. No. Although <sighs> that would be, uh, like, if you can't do it on dry pavement, a parking garage is a good place to try. How do you know that? I, uh, I've heard of other people doing ah, okay, that. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that motorcyclists like to get under an overpass and, and, and like, gun it? Ram, 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 so they can get that echo? Is that is that something that you uh, guys like? You know, Harley riders typically were always doing that. They'd rev the bike a light. Rev, 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 rev. Like, why? You know, if you sat at a light with your car or bike and the idol did that, you'd be off the wall. Right. But yet to do it by yourself, it's just, it's just opposing. It's just like to let people know you're there, right? especially <sighs> if you have straight pipes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do not. I don't get that at, at all. I, I don't understand. Yeah. Speaking of another thing I don't get, I don't get this. Why do you go out and buy a brand new Mercedes and put a rally stripe on it? Can someone explain that to me? You got a brand new Mercedes, an E Class or C Class. I saw an E Class, and it had it wasn't like their their super duper model, but it had a red rally stripe done in that '60s fashion. You know when it runs up with the driver's view, runs up the front of the car, up the hood. Not in the middle, off to the Not side? Not in the middle, off to the side, off to the driver's side. Got it. Very 60s sort of way. Runs up. It was a black car, very nice, very well cared for car, but it had a red rally stripe on it. And I'm like, why in God's name would you possibly want to do something like that? That I don't get. I don't know, but we have a winner to the contest. 
Oh, we do. Via, via email, via, via text. texting. Let me see. Christian and Joe D. both uh, wrote. Uh, let's see. Christian thought. Oh, he said the stripe makes it faster mentally. Oh, got it. Got Christian it. and Joe both had a guess. They thought maybe it was like to take a pee, <laughs> which truthfully was my first answer. Because, you know, a parking garage, no one around. Hey, if you ever watched Seinfeld, the, the, one, the one parking garage attendant had to be there when we did that. Um, but no, that wasn't it. Joe got it right. It is, well, singing, but it's singing along with the radio. <laughs> And I guess because in, in a parking garage is like being in a, a bathroom. Like right. I talked about just last week, I talked about singing uh, in a hallway or a bathroom. I would have said that just because it, it, it involves a certain song or a certain genre of songs. Well, that would be like doo-wop, yeah. You have to doo-wop, yeah. But no, I guess people like to sing in the garage again because it's like being in that echo chamber where you have the you know, great uh, right. it's like harmonics singing, coming back at like you. Singing in a gymnasium or something right. like that. Yeah. And these aren't rocket science. They just don't be questions that I come along during the day. That so. is funny. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. That is very funny. Yeah, so Joe a, wins something. Accolades from his peers, of course. Uh, Hugs from us. Or acupuncture from uh, <laughs> someone near. We'll find something. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, there's just some things I see on the road now, and I just, I am amazed by it. Why do people drive on the road, these road ramblings, why do people drive on the road with their hazard lights on, and they're not doing like 15 miles an hour? They're driving with the traffic, they just happen to have their hazard lights on, they have the emergency flashers on. And I'm like, and you look at them, they're not in distress, they're not choking, they're not, they're not trying to do like self-surgery. Well, maybe they didn't know what that button was, and they pushed it to see what happened. Well, I, I just don't get it. Let's go to the phones, back to the fun. Hi, you're on with the motor mouths. Hey, it's nice to see you guys go to the same barber now. <laughs> Ow! Oh, it's the goat man! It's bad enough when I got to talk to you. Now I got to see you, too. Well, you don't have to, <laughs> technically. Well, I don't know how to work this modern stuff, so I put it on and I see an image there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, why would it come up automatically, Chris? Because if you went on MotormouthRadio.com, is it automatic? The feed is automatically there? You can click on the bar on MotormouthRadio.com, and that will instantly bring you to the Vaughn Live page where we are okay. presently I broadcasting. I on a few bars in my day. Well, yes. that's it. If you don't go to the bar, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and Dennis, I, I was telling Chris before the show, I have, a, I have a gift for you. I don't know if I'll be making the meeting tonight. This is right, that, meeting. that was my other thing. You do know about the meeting. Okay. Yes, I do. But I do have my book that I'm going to partake, uh, part, give to you. My uh, Windows XP for Dummies. It's a book that I bought when I was using Windows XP. We were talking about this <laughs> offline the other night. And it has the information in it that you were asking me about. So okay. I'm going to drop it in the mail to you, along with that video from the uh, But do they the have cruiser. one for super dummies? Well, no, these, are pretty, these <laughs> books are pretty easy to follow. I will say that. Yes. Uh, there is some basic knowledge that's, that's needed, but I think you have that. You do. Well, I got basic knowledge because I am using Photoshop 2.0. Oh, whoa. You have an upgrade over me. <laughs> Ray still is the only individual, I think, on the East Coast that has Photoshop 1.0. Yeah. I just upgraded to 2.0. Nice. It's made out of wood. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it comes with the chisel in the box. That's like in the Flintstones when the bird used to make the picture yeah. inside the thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Voila. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, it's so funny, Dennis, because we've, we've done our tabulating here at the studio, and we figured out that... We are number one for males that are anywhere from 30 to 54. That is our number one demo, it seems, according to, according to some of the powers that be. But also, we are number one in those individuals that can't run a computer. Yeah. That's why we have to stay on terrestrial radio. Really, because the kids don't listen to us. <laughs> Ray, Ray has to make more CDs for more people. It's just, it's just the way it is. That's what we do. Well, we got a convert. Jonathan is younger than us. If he's around Steve's age, he's definitely younger than us. So we right, do. There is hope yet. Well, yeah, we're going to get Jonathan to actually put us on some sort of, some, some sort of uh, internet-based. Other than the ones that we're on, maybe we can get on some more with Jonathan's help. Who that knows? would make sense. Yes. So Dan, what's up for the, what's the for the fleet this this fine feathered fall? No fleet left, man. Well, yeah, you, you got a couple. Mm, got the sixty-seven, the, the seventy-four, and Dale's Falcon now. Right, right. That's good. Now, well, now actually, you have she she made a command decision. Yeah. And the Falcon is now going to be hot rod black. Okay, nice. And what color interior? Uh, black. Wow. Very yeah. cool. I was thinking like white and red. Now, uh, this way, we, you know, there's no harm, no foul. Nobody will die or anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you 
know, black is quite forgiving, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> yes. And what's the wheel and tire choice going to be on that no, car? It's, it's just 14-inch um, rims that came with it. Right. They're four lug. Okay. And uh, we have all new tires on it. We got new Firestone tires, and which, by the way, you can't get white wheels no more, but... Um, and just uh, hubcaps, period. Okay. Very, very simple, done. So, Dennis, you have the 74 GTO and you have the 67 GTO. Mm -hmm. What made you pair your fleet down to just those two? Uh, oh, we've been going nothing, through this for nothing a, made me. a couple of years already. <laughs> this is, yeah, I just need to know. I just need to know. Once again, there are other uh, people that don't know. So. It's just kind of, you know. Uh, it's easier this way. Yeah, it's easy. If you have 100 suits and you only wear two, what's the sense in having the rest in the so closet? So it's just basically two of your favorites. They are your favorites, I'm eh. assuming. <laughs> yes and no. The the 67 I have the longest. I have that 30-some-odd years. Oh, my yeah. gosh. That's in, like, uh, Ray Guarino ownership territory. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Holy moly. How yeah, long have you owned the... The, the car was done in 1989. It was it was uh, restored in 1989. Nice. And it hasn't been a part since then? Nope. Wow. That's that's testament right there. As so, a matter of fact, I just had the uh, the tranny was leaking terrible, and uh, I ran into someone out here who's an old school tranny guy, mm -hmm. and um, he had it for a few days. And I'm like, this is going to be like you know big bill here because this thing hasn't been taken apart in I don't know 40 years. Mm. And good news was, <clears throat> just needed a new pan. The pan was actually so bad it was warped. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And it was leaking. And uh, it needed a new pan and a, a little uh, tranny tune-up, and that was it. No major problems, no major take it out and spend, you know, $2,000 on it. Wow, dodged the bullet. Very cool. Well, that's good. This way you can save your money for yard equipment repairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's done, too. That was another thread we went through that was that's quite too. interesting. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. No, that's nice. All righty, my brother. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and the call. Okay, guys. All right, Dan, talk to you soon. Absolutely. Keep, and keep right. watching. Have fun. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. 516 572 There's your phone number. Hopefully when we come back, we'll be hearing from Ryan Brett, the self-proclaimed automotive archaeologist and columnist for Hot Rod Magazine. Programming this show on the fly with one phone line. We can still do it. Keep that one place spinning. That's Ray Guarino. I'm Chris Switzer. This is Motormouth Radio. A lot more coming your way. The Motormouths will be right back with your car questions. Give us a call at 516-572-7440. WHBC Garden City, New York. The voice of Nassau Community College. <laughs> Join WHPC's Daily News Wrap-Up, weekdays at 4.30 p.m., bringing you a complete report of the day's news home and abroad, as well as sports, weather, and many other informative features. We're Long Island's FM Alternative. Your car not running right? Let the Motor Mouse help you out at 516-572-7440. All righty, here we are. This is what we do. We talk cars. And we've been doing it for a very long time. That's right. You've been listening for a very long time. <laughs> and we're amazed at this. I'm Chris Witcher. That's Ray Guarino. 13 years of fun happening here at Motor Mouth Radio. You can check it out on Performance Motorsports Network, and you can also hear us on iHeartRadio. Yes, we do have some sort of internet uh, presence out there, and you can also check out the stream on MotormouthRadio.com. You can watch us, just like Dennis and Cliff are doing right now, on uh, VaughnLive.tv slash MotormouthRadio. A lot of ways to get to us here at the studio, and we answer your questions. Of course, we take emails. Ray handles all that. MotormouthRadio at ncc.edu. A vast amount of ways, of avenues to get to us. And right now, we're going to get to the phone and say, hi, you're on with the Motormouths. What's up, guys? Hey, Vic. What's up, Vic? How are you, brother? Hey. Doing good today. How about you guys? Yeah, we're above ground, so that's good. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, with the four-way flashes on the parkway, that's just, a, you know, it always got me. In my younger years, I used to, like, cut them off and put them up in the grass. You want to be annoying? <laughs> You've got a reason for the four-way flashes. That's get off of my street. That's what I don't no. get. What, why would they drive on the highway? They're doing 40, 50 miles an hour. they got the four-way flashes going, and th there's no distress whatsoever. Nothing's hanging. Nothing's smoking. They think they're truckers. And <laughs> why do they go past the exit? 
Right. All right. If it's that big, get off the exit here. I'll help you. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I think truckers have to use them under 40 miles an hour, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, really. You know? Yeah, yeah, but uh, some guy in a clapped out Honda Civic, it's not not really. Yeah, right. Like, I want to go out over to uh, uh, Royal Monaco and pop him in the ass one time, dump him, you know? <laughs> yeah. You don't need your flashers anymore, right. you know? Right. We'll get you off the highway, and asphalt is optional. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone there, you know? <laughs> we glad, we're very glad, Vic, we could poke the bear here, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know you got a guest coming on, so I'll hang up. Thank you, my brother. We'll talk All soon. Right. All, All right, Vic. <laughs> that's for sure. I just don't understand some of the driving prowess that's going on out there. It just makes me crazy. On top of the phones, on top of the meandering out of the lanes, on top of all that, what happened? Christian tell me that, of course, growing up around Vic, he learned some good tips on driving because Vic used to run people off the parkway all the time. <laughs> Well, I had a very good friend of mine one time that had a Chrysler wagon, and he had these 4x4s for bumpers, and he used to taunt people. I mean, I never saw him hit anybody physically, but he used to say, go ahead, hit me. Okay. Go ahead, see what happens. Big 4x4 blocks of wood. Let's go back to the phones. How are you wrong with the motor mouths? Hey, how's it going this afternoon, gentlemen? Very good. Sorry about the delay. I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere without much of a signal. Oh, that's okay. Well, anyway, now we do have Mr. Ryan Brunt on the phone with us. I'm glad that you're able to connect. Yes, Ryan. Thank you for being here with us on Motormouth Radio. Uh, nice to hear your guys' voice again. Again, I apologize. I uh, got kind of roped into an epic adventure, and it kind of happened much too quickly. So right now I'm in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, on my way to uh, probably one of the craziest barn finds I've ever found. Or where, I have a lead to. Where are you off to? I'm off to about the middle of Ohio. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a lead on an original 1969 Camaro, which, okay, nothing too crazy there, mm-hmm. but it's an actual, true Trans Am racer. Oh, wow. It actually raced in the Trans Am series up until about 72 when uh, something happened and it broke, and the guy pushed it into the barn and left it there. So that's um, an SCCA car. Yeah, it's an SCC, SCCA car. The whole bit, he has all the, my friend's been going through the paperwork, um, has all the paperwork from Chevy showing what you had to modify, all this stuff. And it is, still has the number on the door. It has uh, everything. Oh, wow. It's just rough. And it just happened within the last three days that my friend was able to buy it. So I have to run out there and document it before he pulls it out of the barn. Okay, okay, mm. good enough. And you know, Ryan, you just answered a question that we asked earlier in the show. Why would people take these rare and vintage cars and just push them in a barn? And I think you've just answered it, because something broke. Well, a race car, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I think even a classic car, too, True. as well. But I'm sorry, continue. So you're off to find this Camaro, and oh. and yep. how, long, what, how long did it take for you to stumble on this? Three days? Well, that's, that's what my friend told me. He told me about this last week, because I, I get leads through uh, my magazine column, and I get leads from my websites and all that. Uh, but this was actually a friend of mine. He's like, hey, he sent me a picture, one picture of the door with the big number on the side. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. He's like, I might be buying it. So he bought it last week, and he's like, I'm pulling it out like this tomorrow. And if you want to come document it, you got to get out of here quick. Wow. So I had a uh, plan within three days to get out there real quick. I think the story about how he found it and was able to buy it is also just as interesting. Yeah. Cause, you know, yeah. It's... I mean, original owner, I mean, still in the same, I mean, it's the original owner from, you know, got it off the Chevy, you know, truck basically and everything. And I guess there's a whole bunch of other cars there too, not mm-hmm. just the Camaro. So it should be a real interesting adventure. Oh, very good. And it's too bad that the book is already out, because that would be a fine addendum to it. And, of course, Ryan's book that is out now at Amazon is Barn Finds and Roadside Relics, Musty Mustangs, Hidden Hudsons, Forgotten Fords, and Other Lost Automotive Gems. Mm. Go to, uh, it is indeed. Go to Amazon and find out. Uh, how long has the book been out, Ryan? Is it, I know it's fairly recent, right? Uh, actually, technically, it isn't out on store shelves until, uh, like, next week. But you can pre-order it on Amazon and on Motorboats and a few other locations as we speak. Nice. That is amazing. 
What made you decide to write this? I mean, when you collect so many cars, it's, it's like, when do you say, you know what, i got to put this all in a hardcover? Um, well, actually, they came to me, uh, surprisingly enough. It, I helped run the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. Uh, it's, a, it's the concourse, or it's the Pebble Beach of Muscle Car Shows in the fall here in Chicago. But I run the Barn Find Display, or I'm the host of it. And I always have a slideshow going of all my uh, incredible finds, you know, Daytona, Emmy Cuda, Shelby Mustang. And we have motor books, uh, now called Squad Pro Drive, there for the last few years. And they came up to me like, hey, where'd you get the pictures from? I'm like, they're my pictures from my adventures. It's like, oh, have we ever heard about, have we ever heard of you before? I'm like, yeah, I do a monthly column in Hot Rod and I'm in Muscle Review, yada, yada. It's like, oh, well, you know, that make a really good book. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, nah, yeah, I'm sure. Take a lot of time. So they came to me with a pitch, and I ran with it, and we got it together. That's great. That is amazing. How long did it actually take you to put this all together, Brian? It probably took me about a year of working on it on and off. Um, the biggest issue I had was not the writing. The writing's pretty easy because it's just retelling of my stories mm-hmm. of my adventures. It was, I have 40,000 pictures. Wow. Yeah. And I have to only curate it down to 100, 125 pictures. That's tough. It's like, what do you pick? Do you pick just the cream of the crop? I mean, of course you pick the cream of the crop, but, I mean, I've found places that have, you know, seven Daytonas in a barn. Wow. Okay, I mean, I can't have, you know, a whole section of the book of just seven Daytonas. I mean, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous. So mm-hmm. you have to go through and you have to go with your editors and pick out what works, what has the best pictures, what, what looks nice. So on and so on. Yeah. What, on that thought, Ryan, on your uh, on barnfinds.org takes you to your blog spot. Our caller Cliff had asked us earlier uh, in this show to ask you about that red Daytona that's now outside the barn, and yeah. and what the story is and what the update is on that car. Um, actually, I just talked to the family. I will every year. I go the same weekend to go see it, which will be in two weeks. The weekend of like October fifteenth. But still the same thing. I mean, it's still sitting out in the pasture area of the horse farm, just sitting there, not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, it's the original owner car. Grandfather bought it brand new in Madison, Wisconsin. Wow. Um, traded in a pretty junky, brand new uh, GMC pickup truck. And they drove it for a whole bunch of years until the gas crisis, when a gentleman stole the gas out of the tank and filled it with water. Oh. Yeah, because I guess, because they had just filled it up at the gas station, they took it to the farm to switch cars because they were going out to dinner, and they didn't want to take the Daytona, and someone followed them to the farm, siphoned the gas out of the Daytona's tank, filled it with water. That way, in theory, the gas gauge would raise the same, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't know about it. And then once they're driving, because, you know, there's gas in the car, there's gas in the line, so they drove, you know, whatever, five, six miles, and then they sucked in the water, blew up the engine. Yeah. And so it's been sitting ever since. Uh, wow. And that was a, a 383 car, I guess, right? Uh, no, that was a 440, 440 automatic right. on the floor. Um, so it's not the most desirable Daytona, but still, you know, sure. one of 500 made. Right. Yeah, sure, sure. Any D- Daytona, I think, is a desirable one. We were just talking about the... the the whole story behind that car, why the reason it's outside the garage, because the garage was in trouble, and what was better, to leave it in a garage that was maybe so-so or to leave it in a field where you know it's going to rust? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that starts a whole other conversation. Oh, I agree. I agree. I mean, it is, you know, good. You know, if they plan on keeping it long-term, and they, if they felt it was that threatened, I mean, it does make sense to pull it out of the garage. Mm-hmm. But as you can see from the pictures, I mean, I've known about it myself for five, six years, and the garage hasn't collapsed, so, and we, a few of our friends know the car, and know it's been sitting outside, you know, in the 80s, it was sitting outside in the 90s, so it's been, it's had a pretty rough life, unfortunately. I'm sure. Right, right, I'm sorry, Chris. Also, Cliff is is texting me again, he's curious if you think the owners will ever sell it. Or is it one of those things where they maybe think that that car is valued higher than it is, which is kind of hard to say with the Daytona because they are pretty valuable even in, in rusted parts. Sure. Absolutely. I don't think so. You know, it's a misconception that they, everyone says that there's you can put a price on anything. If you have enough money, 
But sometimes the memories are priceless with the cars. I mean, this guy, he used to, you know, have hay in the car. <laughs> he used to haul around his young children. I mean, it's been a family heirloom mm-hmm. for its entire life. Mm-hmm. And that car is a direct connection to those memories. So No, while no I, more par, pun intended, I guess. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. but, uh, but, yeah, I, I don't think they'll ever sell it. Right. But um, um, my enthusiasm for it has allowed them to um, – my enthusiasm has rubbed off on them, and they do tend to keep it a little bit cleaner around the car now. <laughs> no. uh, so like they don't let the, the weeds grow up as much around it. They don't, right. you know, oh. pile much stuff up around it. I, th- I think, yeah. Ryan, just give me a second, Ray. Go I think on. Ryan, I think you've answered the second question that we've asked: is why do some of these people keep these cars, even though they know they're slowly deteriorating? But and, and I think that's probably the reason why the memories alone. But I feel that's what pictures and photographs are for. It's not you don't have the physical car rotting away in your yard. I always yeah. thought it was some sort of celebrity status. If it didn't, if that car wasn't there, no way, nobody would be talking to these people or, or, or interested in what they had to say. It's the car that brings all these people together. And I think once the car is gone, all the people, all the interests will be gone as well. Oh, absolutely. That's definitely. There, I mean, there's many different facets to the, you know, the car and find, and that's definitely one of them. Once they lose that thing that makes them special to just another ordinary person. Right. Um, right, right. I definitely have had that experience in the past where, you know, they have that, um, you know, 67 Camaro sitting in their backyard. Why? Not, not because it was cool or, you know, some strong memory attached to it, just because it's a cool car and people want it and they know that people want it and they're happy to have something that other people want. Right. Mm-hmm. Ryan, if this family won't ever sell it, is there a chance they might ever commission someone to restore it for them? I hope so. I really do. I keep on, um, every year I go there with more information on, you know, what's available and what, you know, you can do. And um, I think they're going to actually be building a new horse barn here, hopefully shortly, um, where that old garage is falling down at. And, the plan is to put the Daytona in there eventually. And I have wheel dollies, and I have friends with trucks and trailers and all that, so we're going to help them out. Good, good. So at least we'll bring it stable and then go on, go from there. Mm-hmm. Right. So the, the main goal right now is to preserve the car. No matter who's yeah. owning it, the main goal is to preserve the car. Which is absolutely, which is absolutely. Fun. That's fantastic that you've actually gone that you take that step to go and preserve the car as well as identify them and and bring them out and discuss everything with the owners and and I think that's that's really that's a great cause, Ryan. I do appreciate that. I mean, and, I mean, and that's actually what I do. That's how come. I mean, what you don't see on the website. I mean, I have found much more rare, much rarer cars since that Daytona. I found. A whole, I found at least a dozen 69 Daytonas, a handful of Charger 500s, and so on and so on. And I tell the people, I'm like, I know I have no money. I'm driving this, you know, Challenger. I have no desire to buy your car. I just want to document it. Why is this Daytona, you know, sitting in the field? But I always leave them with my car and I say, hey, you know, if you ever do decide to sell the car, you know, well, I probably won't be able to purchase it. I do know people that you know, are serious about these cars and wouldn't, you know, try to jack you around. Or if you ever want to, you know, fix the car up, I can tell you where to get the parts for it. Right. You know, like that they don't know. I'm like, I know where I can get brakes and all that. Or, I mean, I've worked with enough people that I can point you in the right direction to have them restore it. And that's actually happened quite a few times where I've had people call me up a year, two years, even, you know, let's say six months later saying, hey, it's Steve Smith with, you know, the 69Z20 Camaro in the, in the garage, you know, I thought about getting a kind of running and driving again. I'm like, well, here's where you can go for new brakes, and here's where you can get, you know, all the filters and so on. And people have actually gotten them running and driving again. You know, Ryan, I'll tell you this, and I will volunteer this service <laughs> no, with no problems. If people want to know about uh, what it would, what it's like after the car is back on the road, have them get in touch with me. Give them my email address. Give them my phone number. Because after a 20-something year layoff, I'm driving a car that I've owned for quite a long time that I took four years to get back on the road. And I really feel 30 years younger when I drive that car. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. Especially, when it's, especially with these people that have them because of the memories. Um, the, one of the most recent ones that the guy actually got running, it was the 64 Impala 
it wasn't anything special in line six car, but it was the car that he dated his wife in, mm-hmm. and the wife had passed away, and so on. And it was not an SS or anything, so I didn't really. It I mean, matter. I talked to him for a while. It was a cool car, it was a two door, and he called me up about six months after I had documented it, and he's like, "Hey, you know, I'm thinking about getting it going. You know, what do I need?" I'm like, "Here is, you know, whatever OPG. Here's all these websites for all the stuff that you could need." You can get, you know, even you can get the basic stuff at your local Napa or O'Reilly's or such. Right. And he did. He got it running and driving within a few weeks. Nice. And I saw him at a car show, and he was happier than a clam. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really does. It, it becomes a time machine that portals you back. And especially if you have a lot, I mean, we've all had a lot of different cars, but and I'm sure a lot of them would do it. But the cars that you've had for a long time, I have a lot of history with mine, too. It just takes you right back in time. It's amazing. And, and uh, uh, that's something I think people need to know that, you know, sitting in the yard. Yeah, it's nice to look at. and You say, wow, I still have it. But it's static. It's not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Yep. When you can move it under its own power, it, it's like take, it takes on a whole nother life. Ryan, can we? Oh, absolutely. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about your book and, and about automotive archaeology. You want to hold Sounds on? Good. Hold on one sec. We'll be right back. We have Ryan Brutt on the phone with us, automotive archaeologist and columnist for Hot Rod Magazine, Ray Guarino. I'm Chris Switzer. And of course, the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. If your car has got four mismatched tires, hey, if you got an incomplete set, you're, you're in. You're part of the Motormouth Radio on a group of the hour. Keep it where you got it. Your car not running right? Let the Motormouths help you out at 516-572-7440. Tune in to Thunder Road for... Stop. Join me, Kim Tracy, for the music of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band on Thunder Road, Thursdays at 11 p.m. and Sundays at 1 p.m. on 90.3 WHPC, and streaming at ncc.edu slash WHPC. Let the Motormouths help you with all of your car questions at 516-572-7440. All righty, we're back. We have on the phone Ryan Brett, the uh, automotive archaeologist and columnist for Hot Rod Magazine, talking about his new book, Ryan, how is, it, how is anyone able to get a hold of the book if they need to order it online? Oh, well, you can go to Amazon and just type in Amazing Barn Finds. Uh, it should pop up right away. You can also go on my website, uh, barnfinds.org. There's a link there. Um, also, throw through motorbooks.com. And uh, as soon as it gets shipped, or I think it's actually shipping this week, um, you should be able to pick it up here shortly at your local uh, book retailer. Nice. Cool. And also, Ryan, you also have a YouTube page that people should check out, youtube.com backslash autoarchaeology. Indeed, gentlemen. Uh, I started that a little bit while back. I had recently discovered a junkyard in Michigan that was full of vintage muffle cars. And I don't mean, you know, a 67 Camaro with an inline stick. I mean, no, there was GTO judges, um a 71 Challenger with a shaker hood with a tree growing through the shaker. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this is incredible. I mean, the pictures are moving as they are, but I bet people would love that video. So I uh, went back uh, about a week after I first shot it with a GoPro, and I just walked the yard documenting all these incredible cars. And um, that was my first series. Uh, I got another one coming up here shortly from Steven's Performance, me walking through there junkyard and i have a few more here coming up shortly excellent very good and of course make sure you check out the uh, hot rod magazine every month i had a, a column i pulled out i was going to talk about but we didn't it was in the september issue 15 ways to score a barn find but we're kind of running out of time so <laughs> we may have yeah, to have you back to, to do that yeah well ryan good luck with that uh with with the case you're on this week with that uh camaro we hope to see that in the magazine and then uh and, and we'd love to get you back on again and talk about this stuff. I got to start keeping notes on you because every month is just there's just something new that's every everything is just comment worthy. Yeah, so. th- thankfully I have no life, and it allows me the opportunity to uh, drive around and document these cool cars. <laughs> that's kind of how we do a radio show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. We just call it as we see it. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, well, Ryan. Thank you so much for being with us on Motormouth Radio and continued success. Uh, 
uh, with the column and with the book and with your adventures. I think it's wonderful. We're so glad that we had you on here to share them with us. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate you for having me, and um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Yes, thank you. You too. Be Thanks, safe. Brian. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye. Right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero is the phone number. It's pretty cool. You know, it gets me Jones. I want to get in, a, get in the car and, and drive to the Midwest or the Middle Indiana, someplace like that, and just just go and record barn finds. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, I would love to do something like that too. I know, you know, we watch uh, American Pickers on TV, and they're not usually looking for cars. They look for other things. But mm-hmm. they've said the most fertile ground they find is up here in the Northeast. Which I was kind of surprised at, yeah. but they said because of the history and the amount of time, like you know Massachusetts and Vermont, the the, the states were some of the original colonies. So mm. there's a lot of old stuff up there, and they do find cars and motorcycles. And it's kind of true. When I was spending a lot of time in Minneapolis in the Midwest, uh, people would ask me uh, about the car that I was driving, and they were saying, "Is that a car from the east?" Oh wow! And that was important to them. Really, the car from the is that an eastern what was the car? importance? Because of the rust. Seems oh. like cars, cars <laughs> rust. Cars rust here. They really rust in Minneapolis. Okay. They. Ru- I've I was seen, say I can give them buckets full of rust if I've, they want it. I've seen rust on some driving and running vehicles out there that you would not believe. Wow. Holes, holes big enough that you can put a grapefruit through them. I mean, with mm. the chrome strips still on the car. Right. So things like that. It, amazing amounts of rust with a vengeance out there. Mm. So when they saw an East car, they thought that that was in better shape overall okay. in some of their vehicles, which I found <laughs> amazingly shocking. Well, yeah, I, I, it's it's a little putting a, the horse after the cart on this one, mm-hmm. but I found out many years ago when I put my own car up in storage, it did initially sit outside for a year, and I started seeing all those the cobwebs and, you know, the stuff, the leaves that end up under it because nothing moves, right. and the windows start getting dirty. You want to you keep a car in, in, in any kind of a decent shape, just get it. Off the driveway, even the driveway being better than the lawn, mm-hmm. and just cover it. Get it inside, you know, not with a cover. Get it inside in some kind of a garage or barn or something. Just get it out of the elements. And the problem with being here in the east is space. I mean, honestly, everybody has got mm-hmm. garages filled with stuff, and rarely can a car even get in there, like we've known from last week, because that was the Motormouth Radio on the Group of the Hour last week. People couldn't get their cars in the garage. Oh, was it? All the junk in it. Well, you don't listen to I don't. Re- I don't remember <laughs> that. No. Well, we were, had a little bit of a busy week last week. Yes, we did. And, and, and believe me, I'm still tired from... We had, we had Claudia Wells, we had Butch Patrick, and we had Pat Priest here right. in the studio. And you can hear that show on the download page at Motormouth Radio. And then we went over to the cruise to the show and announced the trophy winners, which right. was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It was. And then I needed a nap after that, that's for yeah. sure. So I'm going to see if on Sunday we were trying to get Scotty Gosson to call from uh, the, the Henry Felsen memorial thing, and then we were just too busy. I'm going to see if I can get Scotty to call on Sunday mm-hmm. and encapsulate that event because it, really, it was a really good thing uh, and a great feel-good thing for Scotty and, all the, and the family and all so. We'll see if we can do that. We'll be looking forward to that on Sunday. Sunday. That's right. For Ray Guarino, I'm Chris Switzer. This is Motormouth Radio, and the best advice we can always give you is... That's right. Don't follow us home. See ya. Bye. From a town near Oyster Bay, Long Island, comes the show devoted to the music of Long Island's own Billy Joel. This is Piano Man on 90.3 FM, WHPC, Garden City, New York.